Hey guys, what is up? My name is Andrew. I'm back with another video. Today's topic is about the early decision process for medical schools. And the reason why I'm talking about this and feel uncomfortable to talk about it now is because I've been recently admitted into my early decision medical school program. I'll be starting medical school in the fall of 2024. Quick disclaimer though, I'm not on the admissions committee for any medical school. I'm not a admissions counselor. I'm just somebody that applied to medical school. And this is just some of the words of advice or pros and cons that I was considering while applying for medical school. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. Before I move into some of the pros and cons of applying to medical school, I do want to provide just a little bit of brief background about what early decision really entails. The early decision process for medical school applications is very similar to early decision for colleges, if any of you guys remember that. It's a binding application, and so you apply to one medical school rather than, let's say, the 20 or 30 regular applicants would apply for, and you are bound to only apply to that one school until you hear back from them by October 1st, and you apply at the same timeline as everybody else usually when everything opens in June or July. However, you'll hear back by your early decision medical school earlier than all the normal applicants. And so that October 1st date, you'll hear back whether you got accepted, rejected, or waitlisted. Best case scenario, right, you get accepted. You don't have to worry about any other medical schools that you might be applying to because you've signed kind of like a binding agreement that you're gonna to go to that medical school if you do get it. Uh, second option is if you get waitlisted or rejected, waitlisted means you can still get in during the normal application cycle, so maybe a couple months later. Rejected means you no longer have that option for that cycle. And whether you get waitlisted or rejected, they both mean that you're allowed to apply to other medical schools after October 1st and send in your primary and secondary applications to be processed other medical schools. And before I delve any deeper into this topic, I want to really emphasize that if you don't get into your early decision school and you have to apply regularly after October 1st, you're really putting yourself at a severe disadvantage when compared to other applicants. And this is because the medical school application process is on a rolling basis. The earlier that you apply um, and send in your full application, the faster that they're able to review it, give you an interview, and then eventually admit you into their program. If you apply later, all you're doing is essentially making it harder for yourself to get into other programs. I just wanted to state that before I went into any more of the pros and cons. And so with some of that background info, I want to get started with some of the pros about applying to early decision. And probably one of the biggest is the fact that you save a lot of money. And so because you only apply to one program rather than the 20 or 30 programs that other applicants are applying to, you definitely save out on a lot of primary and secondary fees, but also interviewing costs. Uh, if you had to fly out for in-person interviews, I know um, early 2020s were still um, in this like post COVID era where we're doing some um, hybrid, some Zoom and some in person. And so it really does just depend on your scenario, but you're definitely saving money on primary and secondary application. Secondly, another pro is that you definitely save out on a lot of time. You're not only spending money to send these secondaries in, but you're definitely spending a lot of time writing the essays, the application, preparing for, let's say three or four different interviews and flying out or attending those Zooms. Um, you're saving out on a lot of time that it takes to apply to these medical schools. Another pro is that if you do get in, you kind of know where you're going or at least where you're set to be at for the next four years. And this is kind of like a pro or a con depending on what type of person you are. If you like to um, have options to weigh and just really decide at a later time. However, if let's say medical school in city A is really your only choice because you have a spouse that lives there or if you have family nearby that you really want to be near, um, near for, this kind of guarantees that the medical school that you will be going to is that one, that one that you really, really prefer to go to. So with some of these pros stated, I want to move into the cons. And I want to preface this section by just saying immediately that personally, I believe the for the majority of applicants, the cons do outweigh the pros for applying early decision. 
early decision is not for everybody. And the first con that I can think of for this is if you don't get in early decision and if you do have to apply regularly after October 1st, like I stated earlier, you're at a severe disadvantage when compared to your fellow peers who had applied earlier in the cycle, whether they had sent in their primary and secondaries anywhere from June through August versus you where you would have to wait a couple months for your um, paperwork to just get processed. You're putting yourself at a disadvantage for those other medical schools if you don't get into your initial early decision program. This could potentially mean the same if not more fees and time for medical school applications. This kind of nullifies some of the pros if you do not get in through your early decision application. Another thing to consider is if you don't get in early decision and you're putting yourself at a disadvantaged position for applying normally for these other medical schools, there is a chance always that you won't get into any medical school that you apply to that cycle. Not only are you applying to the same number of medical schools as your other applicants, you might have to do another cycle, which would only double the cost of applying to medical school. Because of how this whole process works, you're really putting yourself um, in a scenario where you could face another unwanted gap year potentially if you don't get into your early decision school. I think for me, that was the biggest con to consider before applying. And another con is, and we stated this in the pros, but I really believe it can be either, by applying early decision, you're locking yourself into that medical school. So you have to consider, is this really the right decision for you? Do you really want to go to this medical school so badly? Is there something this program offers you in education, research, or simply location or proximity to people that you care about that is truly warranting a decision such as this? With some of those pros and cons being stated, my biggest suggestion to you, if you are considering applying early decision as a student uh, to medical school, I would talk to fellow students and faculty and as many admissions committee or past admissions committee advisors as possible to ask them just how strong of an applicant you are and what type of decisions they were thinking through. Um, let's say you're talking to past applicants that applied through early decision, what kinds of things they considered before applying early decision. Because like I said, this could result in additional gap year if you do apply early and you don't get in. So this is a really big moment and a really big decision to make. Definitely pull as many resources and advice from people as you can. In conclusion, I truly believe that early decision is not for most people. If I had to just throw a number out there, I'd say probably 95 to 99% of people should not be applying early decision. And this makes sense because when you look at the overall applicants, the majority of them are getting through and getting in through the normal application cycle rather than uh, the early decision uh, process. Truly weigh the pros and cons, talk to um, students that have applied early decision, talk to faculty and talk to advisors that you may have on hand, or just reach out to as many people as you can to gain more knowledge about the topic. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was, please leave a like, comment down below. Uh, if you do have any suggestions on topics or future videos you want me to cover as I'm heading into medical school next fall, feel free to leave it down in the comments and hopefully I'll get to it someday. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.